Hey guys, I'm going to kind of break down this stream a little bit um, and then just, it's not talk, it's going to be just, I don't know what scriptures I'm going to throw in there, a few, but anyhow, idolatry, complaining, and wine bags. Talk about the idolatry, guys. That's a lot of my messages. Nobody wants to hear that. They all want you to preach the good, the, the something that's going to warm fuzzy feelings. Okay. And you know what? This is a good message. Because God's grace is sufficient. Are you here today? Yes, by His grace. We've got a chance and an opportunity to turn. That's how much He loves us. We've been, instead, we've been trying to justify our mess. That's where Jeremiah 3.11 comes in. We repent, guys. All of us. This message is not... For me to you, it's for all of us. I'm included, guys. I'm still on the wheel. I've got some issues. Some things God's peeling away, stripping away, cutting away. That's why I put a lot of prayer into these guys. Am I going to get it right all the time? No. But I'm sure putting forth a lot of effort towards it. Because life and death is in the power of the tongue. I'm going to have to count for these words. A lot of preachers are missing. But the idolatry, you idolized everything, guys. So many things. The presidency, the elections, the news media, the, you know, good and bad. Idolized football players, they make $100 million, and, you know, like or don't like, but it doesn't matter. Gets paid more than Congress and the presidents and more than a lot of people even and it's and it is something is going on there all this is going to come to light but some of them are barking about that they're you know been public servants for you know so many years and they're making 40 million dollars some of these football players get a hundred million dollars in one year for what we've idolized it you don't think so okay this one's free but go go drive down a street pick a street if you're living in any major city, shopping center after shopping center after fluff and stuff that we don't even really need. A hundred of them. Go to a movie. We've idolized vigilantism and why we wonder why it's running rampant in the street. Oh, you don't think so? How oh, if you don't get your way in a movie, you're Bruce Willis flying through the air and what was that, Die Hard? Two pistols in your hand and you're shooting at all the bad guys. They all have AK-47s. They can't hit it squat, but you kill 20 of them. And you, then you roll and... The movie on the other day, and within five minutes, this lady killed two or three people. We want to lie murder. Look at the video games, guys. Look at all the horror shows. Go to a fast food store, fast food chain, and let them mess up your order. Man, you'll see some ugly stuff coming from people. And now especially, everybody's stressed over this. We've idolized the mask. Golden beast, honestly. The health. And I get that. Okay. But it's not. It's not about health, guys. It's about control. Newscasters. Sorry, Aaron. We do love, we do, I do care that people are dying. You've walked in my shoes, followed me for three years down at the homeless minute. How many people I prayed for? How much we gave out? No one helped us. Didn't ask for a dime. Not asking for a dime now. Just did it. Some of them were 12, 14 hour days. I got a friend that's doing that now all over the streets. Some days he looks great and other days he looks wore out. Knocking it out. But we've idolized, we've idolized the media. And what are you guys doing? All you hear about is the spikes how deadly, they, not even how deadly you just hear about all this coronavirus, garbage, same rhetoric. You go ballistic, 
and accuse the president of stuff, even if it's right or true. What are you doing about it? Nothing but barking, and you're so angry. At the, this is not a Trump promotion political ad. Do you see a Trump bumper sticker posted on my head? Do you see a magna hat, mag, whatever it is, magma hat? Um, no, you don't. Does that mean I'm telling you not to vote? No, I'm not. Quit idolizing things, guys, because it's destroying us. I'll end with this one. It's on one of my messages. Well, actually, there's two. I love convenience. Hardly anybody watched it. Uh, you know, talk about prayer. Very few people watch it. There's one that they have a lot, but it was a ho ho holiday idols. Guys, I grew up in this country. I loved Christmas, but we've idolized so much of it. We replaced the day that we picked for Jesus' birth. You can't hardly say Merry Christmas anymore. It's Xmas. It's Black Friday. Jesus was replaced with a Santa Claus and an eight hundred dollar Christmas tree. Some of these major retailers and a big screen TV that cost twenty seven hundred dollars and a day to remember because you bought a, a bow on a brand new car that cost eighty thousand dollars that people can't afford. Idols. Nobody wants to hear that. Easter. Halloween. Nobody wants to hear that. There is good news in this though, guys. His grace is sufficient. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard. He's calling, guys. There's still time, but he wants us to repent and turn and, you know, quit tearing down statues. And some of them shouldn't even be been there, guys. I get that, okay? I'm in the South, but I'm from the North. People aren't gonna like this. But a lot of that Confederate stuff, man, we're just, promoting a dark, evil empire, dark time in our American history. Yes, it was history, but it wasn't a good history. Look at my message on about when John Kelly said that the Civil War was just a misunderstanding. It's on there. John Kelly and General Lee, look it up, guys, and watch it and see where my heart's really at. You'll see the heart of God, too. It's garbage that we've been eating and feeding because we've idolized so many things we've idolized our cars all kinds of stuff okay let's move on guys because i got plenty of them out there about idols and there's more coming but it's because there's a storm coming and we've got to quit justifying it our sin and then it's sin face it guys it's sin okay complaining this was a warning that the Lord gave me. Because I asked him, I started talking to him, you know, what's what, complaining? He said, yes. He said, just like the children of Israel did when they complained about the manna from heaven. It might not be like Subway where you go in there and you pick eight different flavors that you want. It may not even have spice on it. It might be real plain Jane. But if it's sustenance from the Lord and it's manna from heaven and he's providing for you, Quit complaining. We've complained and complained and complained our way. It's time to take action, okay? That old saying is an old saying, the buck stops here. You know, no personal accountability. You can do whatever and say whatever you want and be just crazy stuff. Well, for the Christian, you know, that, okay, you don't believe in God, fine, shelf that. But for the Christian, the Christians that I'm talking to, it's the cross. Don't believe me, 1 Corinthians 1.18, I think it's 1.18. For the preaching of the cross is foolishness to those that are perishing, but it's life to those who believe. But the power of the cross, the blood of the Lamb, the grace is sufficient. All lives matter to God. Said it in John 3.16. Here's a free one. This one's free. It's on there. A couple years ago. Dream. He's dreaming. And the Lord said. Colossians 3.16 is just as important as John 
And then I woke up, oh, man, I had to run to get my Bible. What does Colossians 3.16 even say? John 3.16, pretty important, guys. You hear that a lot. 3.16, but read all of it. Pass that, too, but it's how we treat each other. How are you treating your brothers and sisters? Are you in the streets raising hell and burning everything and rioting, and if you don't get your way, you shoot them? Burn the idol. Vigilante is about to get my way or I'm going to kill you. Literally. Instead, we're sitting in our easy chair complaining. Some of us are even in the church complaining and on YouTube and social media complaining. It's a bunch of do-nothing burgers, whatever. It's action time, guys. Get up. I'm complaining about this mask. I don't wear one, guys. I walk right into the stores. Got kicked out of a few of them. Now, the vast majority of the people just look at me. I can feel it in the spirit. Some of them are angry. Some of them are wishing they could say something to do. Do it and be... I'm not trying to be something I'm not. I'm just not going to do it. Quit complaining. And let's take some action. The third one was wine bags. And it was wine bags. Maybe it's WH, maybe it's WI. But I asked the Lord, I said, what are you, wine bags? And he said, yeah. He said, I said, what? I don't get it, God. He said, you know those cheap Ziploc bags you buy from the dollar store that don't work? Because you're trying to save a buck. Yes, Lord. They don't work. The seal's broke. They won't seal properly. That's us. We've let the seal break and the Holy Ghost has escaped. If it was in you to begin with, some of us have it so sealed up we won't let it in. And he said, I can't pour out my spirit upon broken vessels, wine bags. Whether you're whining about something or you're just a dirty old bag that's, you know, a vessel of no use. Sorry, right. ouch. Me too, guys. That's why it's wanting to purify us. That's why the storm that's coming. I'm not making this up, guys. It's in a couple weeks. I don't know. I put that out there. And one of the guy, one of my friends on Facebook, I don't know him that good, but he seems like a decent guy. Put out there, man, storm, it's already here. Well, yeah, look around, it is. But what's coming, guys, is a separation. Gonna be choose Jesus or not, choose God or not, choose the Holy Ghost or not, choose the Word or not. No more of this fence business. The fence has been torn down. Why do you think all this coronavirus happened the way it did? Why do you think God even allowed it? Because the house was built upon sand. The vast majority of churches were built upon sand. Where a lot of this non-essential stuff, it was already in the church. Better than mentality. Everybody wanted to be the, pop, the, the apostle, the prophet, and the pope. Why? So that they didn't have to listen to anybody, including God. Sorry. Hide behind that. It was a sham. Just like all this other stuff that's going on, don't you think God sees what's going on? We can come up with all the kind of the Bill Gates stuff and all the other stuff that's going on. God sees all that, guys, all that mess. Of course, he's doing some stuff. You know, his, his love of life is his pile of money. But money didn't make him evil, guys. I sat under a pastor and he said, you can be poor and have a love of money. Some people, you know, they covet things. They steal things. They want other people's stuff. Man, guys, either rubber meets the road situations. Look around. And we try to justify it. Like Jeremiah 3.11 says. And he wants us to repent. And that's why I'm going to end with this. That 5 a.m. prayer in the morning time. Why is that so important? Not because I said it. You're not going to get your answer from me. Or any other YouTube. Anything from truth. Some of them are. A lot of them are. There's some really good messages out there to not but that 5 a.m. prayer 
importance of it is I've been getting up earlier now. The Lord's been waking me up all kinds of not so good time. I'm, I'm pretty exhausted, but at times, but I still get up and pray and do whatever He tells me to do. But it's the listening piece, guys, and the cool still of the day. I don't have to turn on my internet if I choose not to. I don't have to turn on my cell phone if I choose not to. I choose to turn off the news. I already cut it off, canceled it a year ago. Best thing I ever did. I can plenty of it on YouTube, and it, there's even a lot of fake news out there. You have to be very careful, Facebook. You, you can find it if you need to, but it's a lot easier to pick and choose and just shut stuff off. But this battle's not going to be won. Taking a stand is going to be taking a knee. This is one of my favorite things to do now. Jesus, what would you do? Because I don't know. I ask him that all the time. Sometimes I get an answer I don't like. Sometimes I get an answer I want. Sometimes it's something down the road. But when we bring it to him, and our source is God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and the Word, instead of some, you know, expert, the news media, or some expert, and take this Fosse guy. Has anybody in the news media ever really dug to dispel or to prove? I don't even know if prove is the right word, but did he create this stuff or did he not? Is he part of this nefarious stuff or not? That's why I don't listen to him. Instead, you pick some 16-year-old young kid, Gretchen or whatever her name is, and she's supposed to be an expert on, on climate control or whatever. She's 16, guys. Or most of you that are in past your 20s are like, you come to the realization, man, when you're 16, you were, your hormones are raging, you were, you did a lot of idiotic, stupid stuff. Face it. Expert at what? We believe all this stuff. We got sucked into all this stuff. That's my whole point, guys, to all of this. And my whole point to the 5 a.m. prayer. And my whole point to listen. And you can't listen if you got 9 million distractions. And if kids are up, I mean, wow, my world, there are no kids. But wife's not up. Me and my dog, it's quiet. Not cars on the streets even. We live in a neighborhood that's pretty quiet anyhow already, but no distractions. No nothing, no technology, no bleeping. Nothing. So that's why I say, get up with me guys. I'll see you at five in the morning and listen. And then the last thing, because that's what's happening with all this non-essential and the riots and stuff because nobody was listening to them. I, 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 you know, I get that. I try to put the shoe on the other foot a lot. I won't ever turn off my comment section. A lot of gutless preachers out there that I already have. It's not a beef, it's a grief of the Holy Ghost. It's all part of that better than mentality and what I've got to say is essential and what you have isn't. And I've heard, I've been in churches and I've heard better messages talking to the homeless people before service than I heard coming across the pulpit. Actually, the stuff coming across the pulpit was killing people. Part of that Captain Crunch Christianity. Nobody wants to hear that. And I, you know, I get it. But like I said, there's good news in here. You're still here. His grace is sufficient in your time of need. He's calling. I'm going to end with this. If, it's, if all you're hearing is demand, 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 demand. Prove what did he tell Jesus when he was in the wilderness demanded? What, what did the God, thief on the cross, if you're the son of God, come down? What did all the people say? If you're the son, you know, a demand, a demand, a demand, a demand. It's from the enemy, from the devil. The government's demanding that we all wear masks. The government's demanding that we lock ourselves up. For what? So for six months or whatever. They don't even put a time limit on anymore. Okay, great. 
well, who's going to pay your light bill and your water bill and your mortgage bill and when you don't have a house to go lock yourself up in, where are you going to be on the streets? You should see how, again, the homeless people had it pretty rough. Guys are getting treated really, really bad now. Horrible. Instead, we want to, you know, oh, we're going to trust them all. Trust who? The people that locked us up? Come on, guys. Get real. We've been dumber and dumber, honestly. Me too. I'm not saying that I, you know, don't care about the people's health and stuff, but look at even, you know, that's why I repost this. A lot of the statistics prove me if I'm wrong. That's fine. Great. I don't think you can. Most of the time, the coronavirus is the bottom of the chart. It's fine. And I'm not knocking those people that died because those are real people and they've got real hurt and they've got real lives, parents, children. And I wept and cried. And six months ago, this couple lost a little child. It was a firefighter. Probably one of the good guys, honestly. That, man, that pain's probably never going to go away, guys. But neither is the people that have been assassinated by this riotous bunch. One lady, I believe is her brother. Other people grandfathers, other people, their children, murdered, for what? Because some bunch of spoiled brat complaining kids didn't get their way. People barking on the internet, the news media portrays that, blasts it. Some lady, you know, to, not just to fund the police, you know, take America down. Well, where are you going to live? Man, it's just, it, it is stupidity, guys. We idolized Congress and stuff, and they're making all these dictatorship, ungodly rules from Congress to mayors to judges. Public servants, guys, and some of them are making millions. Where are they making the millions from, guys? There's probably something to do that. All this Heyman stuff is coming out, guys. That's part of it, too. But I'm going to end with this to defund the police, okay? There are public servants, 40 to 60,000, I don't know, you know, maybe some of the detectives made a little bit more, you know, an okay salary. Livable, if you can kind of squeeze some of it. But if any of them all of a sudden had a million dollars, and it'd be all bribery and stuff and everything, most of them took an oath. They're still out there on the streets, getting beat up and even risking, not really risking their lives. And we, you know, the thin blue line, well, now it's even gotten thinner. They have to kind of hold up. If you were a cop, would you trust, would you trust America? Would you trust the people around you? And put the shoe on the other foot, guys, we threw them under the bus. And most of them were good people. Not all of them, of course not. That you know, that murderous, evil guy. There's more out there, I'm sure. But look at what a lot of these people in our government are doing over power and all these power trip plays, and you know, saying they care. Biggest, loudest mouth, whatever her name is, AOC or whatever her name is, one of them. Some of the dumbest stuff she says, guys. She didn't care about people's lives. Oh, so we lose a few jobs. People are losing their lives over this, guys. Look at the Black Lives stuff. They've been just viciously rampant. Running the streets. We wanted to fund the police. I put that post out there about what Herman Gehring's first order of business was. To fund the police and destroy them so the brown shirts could. Does that not seem like kind of like a parallel to what's going on? I'm not left wing. I don't care. You can slap a label on me. It might even fit in my forehead, but it's not true. Where am I getting this from? You're not around at four or five in the morning when I'm getting up and the Lord's downloading these things into me. I will end with this. Because I do have to guard what I say. I was natural. It was a couple years ago. 
went went to a big box store where I used to work for 20 years, or it had been 20 years since I'd seen this lady. She was over the manager of the department and garden. So I figured she knew what she was talking about. I was buying my fertilizer, it was about to rain. You know, I know that's a good time, and I always like buy Scott's Turf Builder. A little expensive, but I, I've had really good results with it, okay? Oh no, and you're the wrong kind, blah, blah, blah. You got, got some cheaper, and plus it's the wrong time, and it's easy to do it. And Okay, well, you know, she's probably an expert at it. That's the expert thing. So I get what she says. Well, I failed to read the directions, guys, and I had St. Augustine, it was from Bermuda grass, and, it, and two days later, my grass went from really nice green to dead. Never to come back. Burn, toast. I was mad for a couple of days. My wife's like, you should go up there. They all a yard, blah, blah, blah. And I caught a lot of flack. Did you read the directions? No, no, I really caught it. Rightfully so. But I thought she was an expert at it. And then I was mad for two or three days. And then in prayer, imagine that. Lord spoke to me and he said, how much more important would you say to people because their lives are at stake? you don't burn and destroy their lives. Guys, that's always been weighing on me since. I can't just be a volcano and spout out whatever I want to say. Because I'm going to stand before the God that created heaven and earth. Not you, me. Steve, what did you say to him? Did you tell him what I told you to tell him? Or did you just make stuff up as you go? Be very careful, guys. Because it's not you that I'm, your comments are hate or not or whatever. Call me left or right. Or, man, I've been told that was false and I never got it. But, you know, I put out a comment and somebody was like all about Trump and a Trump lover. And I just didn't say anything about him. It's all about something totally different. But I hadn't got the guy's comments off and actually now he's putting a few that have been fairly good. Don't agree with a lot of them, but they still be good. That's the problem we've got right now. Shut up, wear a mask, lock yourself up. Who cares if you lose your everything? Your college degrees, your business, your house, your land, your cars, your wife, whatever. Who cares? It's a health issue. And then if you say anything, oh, you're just, man, I pray for people all the time. I don't, I'm a minister. Where's the love of Christ in me if I want people to be sick? It's not. Quit hiding behind that, that mask of false humility. Sorry, guys. It's time we quit justifying our sin. Love you guys. Uh, you know, these messages are long. A lot of people don't even listen to them, so really probably not even listen to the end of this, but love you guys. Hope you do. Um, I've just got way more to say than I can say. Love you guys. I really do. And I don't want you to be unhealthy, and I don't want to make anybody sick, and I'm going to try to keep my distance from you, and I'm going to try not to get sick myself so that you get sick. And then, man, there's so much to it. I will end with this. Who's your source? It better be God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and His Word. And you're not going to get it listening to me or any of these other preachers, or, because that's the beauty of the cross. You come boldly before the throne of grace. If all you got is Jesus, or God, what will you do? Because I don't know. That's what he wants. He wants to talk to you. Be your friend. Guide you, lead, guide, and direct you to all truths. But with all this divisive distractions and everything blowing up in your face all around, turn this off. Turn off your tablet, turn off the internet, turn off everything. I'm not talking about for five minutes and then blast right into it. 
I hate this stuff, actually, all this media and social, and, and the only reason I'm doing it is about obedience, because God told me to. I don't like it at all. Sometimes it, man, it just really grates me. But here I am. But I've seen too many times and things and then with the obedience. He wants your obedience and your availability, not your ability. Turn off everything and turn to him. See you tomorrow, 5 in the morning. Poke your head out. Your head is different than mine. But Jesus, if we do this collectively, that's what's going to change things, guys. Not our talk, but our listening. Love you.